Welcome to another episode of I Am Nano. Putting the I in I Am Nano, I am your host, Irfani. And putting the M, I am your other host, Monica. And today, we're going to be talking about graphene. Graphene that can be made from, guess what? Drum roll. Trash. Trash graphene. Woo! (laughs) In all seriousness, there are articles calling it that because the graphene can be generated from food waste, such as banana peels and coffee grinds, to all sorts of single-use plastics, from wrappings to even tires. Yeah, garbage, trash. It is <laughs> truly remarkable. So it's called trash graphene because it can be made from garbage. Its other name from the you know more scientific articles is flash graphene because not only can it be generated from trash, but it can also be made in a flash. Literally in a flash. Mm -hmm. Researchers at Rice University released a nature paper in early 2020 detailing a method that can produce graphene in 10 milliseconds. That's 0.01 seconds. Literally in the blink of an eye, you can get nearly a gram of graphene. Wow. So fast, so much. So updates to the original paper have shown that even plastic pellets from tires can also be upcycled into the graphene, as well as coffee grinds. And, you know, the world is pretty much drowned in plastics. They're in our tea bags and the fishes and the oceans and pretty much everywhere else on Earth. And although we can recycle plastics, they're actually not that profitable. Companies found that it's cheaper to make new plastic than to reuse to recycle plastic. And sad fact, not fun fact, less than 20% of all plastics produced are recycled. And the majority of them actually ends up in landfills or incinerated as, you know, it is more cost effective for companies to do so. But if we change it and transform this garbage into graphene that's usable, well, you know, that's a whole other story, right? Yeah, it is. Exactly. And to add to your facts, Almost 40% of all food gets thrown out too. And to top that off, 9 billion tons of plastic waste are generated yearly. And this number is estimated to reach 18,000 billion metric tons of plastic waste per year by 2050. So the graphene here that we're talking about that's generated is called turbostratic graphene. It has a special name. It is slightly different than the high purity single layers or strongly stacked layers that we find in graphene nanosheets. The turbostratic graphene is actually single sheets of graphene stacked in a very messy way. Whereas when we get graphene from pencil lead or graphite mines, it's neatly ordered. Now, you know, that's not such a bad thing. Because of the layers being messy, they interact less with each other, which actually makes it easier to disperse them or distribute them. So yeah, it's like having two piles of papers, one that's nicely stacked and then one that's kind of messy. The nicely stacked ones hold together better, but then the messy one can fall apart quickly, which when we're trying to take something apart to get the single sheets, it's a good thing. And we want the single layers to distribute themselves when we add them to a mixture evenly and easily. So for instance, in composites of newly formed plastics, so that the properties are even throughout. Now, a little bit of graphene added to concrete has been shown to double its strength and also increase its water resistance, saves materials, and increases its longevity. Yeah, exactly. And graphene can be used for its conductive properties as well in electronic materials and other types of plastic composites and, you know, infrastructure, like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. or packaging Mm -hmm. even, or even asphalt in roads. It would be so nice if roads could last smoother for longer. And it's been shown that that could happen with a little bit of graphene. So we covered that the type of graphene is turbostratic and has messy layers. Let's talk a little bit more about the actual magic, the method. 
For graphene to commercially be viable, we have to make it in a cheap and fast way, which before flash graphene was not the case as it cost up to 200 US dollars for one kilogram of graphene, depending on quality. It's really expensive. Right, it's called flash graphene because it's made in a flash and it's done by zapping the carbon materials. The method can make graphene from any carbon source without solvents or chemical additives. And you don't even have to do it in a clean room or an inert or argon atmosphere. You can do it out in the open air actually to make a usable graphene that costs only 100 US dollars per ton, meaning $100 for almost 1,000 kilograms. It's so much cheaper than what we currently have now. Yeah, impressive, right? So the process is by using flash dual heating, FJH, and it can create graphene from various sources with yields of 80 to 90% and no need for additional purification. The flash dual heating technique used in the paper from Rice University is the same concept as the one from the original design from 1840. Wow. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Pellets of the carbon material are placed within two electrodes inside a quartz tube and they're blasted with a large voltage, about 400 volts, that can reach a temperature of up to 3,000 kelvins. So in Celsius, that's over 2,700 degrees Celsius and just over 5,000 Fahrenheit. So it's hot, it's very yes. hot. I mean, they say the surface of the sun is 5,000 Kelvin or in 5,000 Kelvin or approximately 5,500 Celsius, 9,900 Fahrenheit. So you're looking at half the heat of the sun in 10 milliseconds. That's, oh my goodness, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that heat can, that heat that they're applying can fluctuate mm -hmm. depending on the source material and the compression of the material between the electrodes. But we are breaking the chemical bonds overall with a lot of energy. That allows the carbon atoms to rearrange themselves. And then the other atoms that are not carbon can be evaporated or sublimated away, such as water, leaving mm -hmm. pure graphene amazing you know how we're using all these older techniques models to solve current problems now i kind of want to see what we can do with these flash graphene now <laughs> me too i want to see what can happen and i hope everyone listening can you know think of applications that we can do with it and overall by applying scientific thinking and asking the right questions we can hopefully save the planet from the plastic conundrum all while driving cool graphene nanotechnology applications. Yeah, you know, maybe like from our previous episode about the superhero costumes, maybe they can be made with graphene, you know, how they just all of a sudden shows up and maybe it can give Flash Wanda's brother his superpower. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> the we future. Have to try. We have to try. All right. Well, that's all the Nana for today. Take care. And stay curious. <laughs>